Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad you joined me for home worship today. And before we get into the Lord's Word of God, I want to say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. Many are suffering that are your children, dear Father, and please open their eyes, ears, heart, mind, and soul to your word today and give them eyes of understanding. And I pray that your will be done, not mine. And I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you may hear me say Yeshua, and that means Jesus in Hebrew. So if you brought your Bibles today, turn to the book of Romans chapter 8. And we're going to read verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to point out that it says that all things work together for good to those who love God. It doesn't say all things are good for those who love God. Do you understand? Sometimes we have adversities, we have trials, which is a test. We all have to be tested, brothers and sisters. There's no exception. Brothers and sisters, when we go through hard times, people either do one of two things. They either run to God or from God. And we always have to run to God. Nothing happens in this world that God does not allow to happen. And so we're going to look at a story in the book of Genesis that will prove that. So turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 37. And as you know, Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob, and God changes his name to Israel, and he has 12 sons. And today we're going to look at a story about one of his sons named Joseph. And so from chapter 37, we will read verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a turnic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. I'm reading from verse 12. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Sheshem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Sheshem? Come, I will send you to them. And so Joseph goes and we'll start reading verse 23. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. Reading verse 26. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then the Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Now can you imagine what Joseph felt like? I don't know what you're going through now. And I know some of us are having hard times, no doubt. But this is a sad, sad story. Amen? Amen. So reading from chapter 39, verse 1. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard in Egypt, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. 
And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had he put under his authority. You see, brothers and sisters, though he had hard times, God was always with him to help him. And you have to remember that. Now reading from verse 6b. Now Joseph was a handsome in form and appearance. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast logging eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Well, verse 11. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside that she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. Amen. Joseph, he had power over sin. He could resist, and he had honor for God the Father. Amen? Amen. And so now, reading from verse 16. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. And so essentially, she's going to tell her husband that he tried to rape her. She tells her husband in verse 18, So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. Verse 20. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. Now we'll continue reading. We'll turn to chapter 41, verse 1. Then it came to pass at the end of the two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. And so Pharaoh has all his wise men interpret the dream, but no one can. And when his Butler and his cook were in prison because Pharaoh had sent them there. That Joseph had interpreted two dreams for them. And so they tell Pharaoh about this Hebrew servant that is in prison and can interpret dreams. So he summons Joseph. And so we'll read verse 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. And what he tells him essentially is that for seven years, there's going to be wealth in the land. And they're going to have much food and much rain. But then there's going to be a seven-year drought. And so this is Joseph's advice to the Pharaoh of reading verse 34. Let Pharaoh do this. And let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine. Read verse 39. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. In verse 42, Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him with garments of fine linen, Put a golden chain around his neck. Can you see how the bad that Joseph went through turned out to be good? Because God's hand was in on it. 
And you could be suffering right now. And if you are a child of God, you're called by God, and you are living for Him, He knows what you're going through. Because He produces everything that surrounds His children. And it's all for a reason. Brothers and sisters, we all have to be tested of our faith and our love for Him. There is no exception. In the land of Canaan, where his dad, his father, Jacob, is called Israel now, and his 11 brothers, they're starting to starve. They have no food. And they've heard that there's food in Egypt. And so, Jacob wisely sends 10 of his sons to go to the man in charge, which happens to be Joseph, but they don't know it. And so when they get there, Joseph recognizes them, but he doesn't tell them, and they don't recognize him. Many years have passed. And so Joseph kind of plays games with them. He helps them, but he wants to see his younger brother Benjamin, who they have left, because that's the brother that he had with the same mother, and Abraham wouldn't let Benjamin go because he already lost Joseph. He didn't want to lose Benjamin. But Joseph plays games with them, makes them bring Benjamin, and ultimately bring his father. And so they come. And God tells Jacob in a dream, in chapter 46, in verse 3. So he said, I am God. The God of your father, do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make of you a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. So they took their livestock and their goods, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to Egypt, Jacob and all his descendants with him. Now we'll go to chapter 47, and we'll read verse 5 and 6. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and your brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. See, it was all God's plan. If this had not happened to Joseph, Israel wouldn't be here today. They all would have starved. And so now what happens is Jacob dies, and the brothers are very fearful now, okay? And they think that Joseph's going to take vengeance on them. And so they go to him, and reading from verse 19, Joseph says to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. You see, brothers and sisters, God's hand was in on that. And yes, Joseph had to suffer, but he kept his faith. He ran to God, not from God. And it's so important, brothers and sisters, that you do the same thing. I will share something that happened to me uh, maybe about seven years ago. I was in Uganda, Africa, deep in the bush. And I was with a pastor who was driving the vehicle. We had just left the church that we had planted. And my wife was in the back seat. And there was a woman there that was very upset with the pastor that was driving me. I don't know exact details, but she was traumatized, to say the least. And she lays in front of the vehicle so we cannot move. And all the villagers surround the vehicle. And they start beating on the vehicle and shaking it. Our windows are up. My wife is laying on the back. 
crying bitterly, emotionally, praying as she's weeping. The pastor's on the phone in Kampala to a, a police officer asking for help, which is a long ways away from where we were. And I told them, do you not know that God has angels looking after us? And so, shortly after, there's two officers that are arrived there, and they're standing post. One comes to the door. He wants to call for reinforcement. Even though they have big AK-47s in their hands, they are fearful of these villagers. There's many, many villagers. And so the man asks for the phone so he can call his superior, and his hand is literally shaking. It's shaking. And so he calls, and he walks away from his post. Now we only have one officer next to the vehicle, and they're surrounding the vehicle. And so the officer comes from the back, comes up to my window, and tells me that they want to put petrol on the vehicle and set it on fire. Whoa. Now the crying's louder from the back. The pastor's panicking, calling, and yelling for help, help. And I see two men talking in front of the vehicle. And one of them's the biggest Ugandan I ever saw. And I believed that he was an angel. And I said to myself, my homeboy, help us out. And he goes to the back of the vehicle. Right where they were going to put petrol on the vehicle and set it on fire. And then shortly after that, reinforcements came. And they took people away and arrested them. And when we went to the police station, because the driver had to give a statement, the big man that I saw came out of nowhere from the right, came up to the window and said, are you all right? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, that's good. And he walked away. And I turned to my wife. And I said, that's your guardian angel. So brothers and sisters, we all have to be tested. Pass the test. Run to God, not from God. And praise his name, no matter what you're going through, because that's his desire. And pray continually. And he will take you out of the fire and lift you up like he did Joseph. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, always remember that all things happen for a reason. And we should never question God. He has his reasons. We can guess what it is, but only God knows. But it's for your benefit. Because anytime we go through trials, brothers and sisters, it always brings us closer to God. Amen? Amen.